So, um, I'm going to talk about uh, assessing the gender effect of austerity. And in that question, there are two, there are two, um, quest two, two issues. One is um, analyzing the effect of austerity on, on people's lives and people's income, on people's uh, well-being. And the other is the gender effect of it. And the question, obviously, in this session is why do gender <coughs> impact assessment of austerity in particular, but of any policy uh, uh, more generally. Um, and it's important for three main reasons. One, obviously, is um, to promote gender in equality and indeed reduce existing gender inequalities. Part of it is uh, being entrenched in legislation for many years on different uh, acts, uh, equality duties that the government has to um, make sure that any policy they undertake in this country, but also it has been done in other countries, uh, doesn't doesn't um, unfairly disadvantage some groups, be it women or other other types um, of disadvantaged group. In this case, we look at gender, but also and perhaps more importantly, because it would include the first category, is to make sure that policy change or policy reform are actually producing the effects they are intending to produce, um, therefore are being made more effective in achieving any aim. Uh, could be gender equality, but other, uh, such as increasing employment or increasing people's health, etc., etc., um, improving people's health. And then the third one is the discrepancy between a policy statement or a policy aim and the actual uh, uh, result in, in practice and, and uh, the resource that, that's been uh, committed to uh, uh, make this happen. Um, so it kind of a, of a, a public accounts, uh, scrutiny of, of how the money is spent and whether that money should be spent in other ways that may be more um, effective or produce longer term benefits that are m worth pursuing. So the, um, the, the reason why we have to look at gender effects is because of differences in roles, behaviours and relationships between men and women as, as Sue has explained this morning, so I'm not going to uh, dwell on this um, more, but also because of the structural differences that they are faced with, uh, and it's not to do by ch uh, to do to chance or even to do to choice. <coughs> so that needs to be analysed as well. It's kind of an indirect effect of all the policies. And uh, an example for that is that policies impact differently, but in systematic ways. So we don't we don't necessarily um, understand straightforwardly what the effect would be on different uh, groups. But if women are responsible, f for example, for picking up children, then uh, if you change school hours, will have af affect their employment more than men's employment, even though um, the, the premise could be that, oh, but anyone can pick the children, therefore they can change the, um, the way they organize their, their couple, for example. But that's not necessarily the case, as, as Susan explained earlier, because of gender norms and the way habits have been formed through these gender norms and negotiations within the households. So the five, some of the principles of the gen a gender impact analysis could be that, as Sue said, in terms of um, the premise of feminist economics, is to focus on individuals rather than households. And in this context of policy analysis, it's important because a lot, not so much the theory of economics has been mainstreamed uh, in a way that household is the main unit of, uh, of interest, in a way of simplifying models or, or economic models. But it has become also a policy focus that households are the unit uh, of assessment for policy. And in many countries, individuals within that household are left to decide what it, however they want to um, react to any policy change, rather than considering that some of these individuals, because of different interests and constraints, um, may not be faced with the same opportunities to react, uh, and therefore have that has consequences. So that's very important, especially in the context of austerity and social security and public services cuts. We come back to that, uh, but also it's c considered the long-term effect of policy, and therefore the lifetime perspective uh, of of how individuals. Um, uh, behave and uh, react to different changes that mm -hmm. something that may be in, be in their best interest now may not be uh, later. And again, this interacts with 
whether we con consider the unit of analysis as the individual or the household, because individuals move through different households over the, their lifetime. Um, also, the, 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 the effects of, on the unpaid uh, and caring economy, as well as the paid economy, uh, because it has uh, interactions, as we said earlier, um, and, and different responses to economic incentives um, due to their characteristics, due to, to different interests, but also due to uh, the, the way norms have structured this set of opportunities. Um, and, and it's not so much the direct effect on, say, um, uh, an income policy of uh, tax, tax policy, for example, is not so much to do with we, we should therefore analyze how it will affect incomes, even if we do so by analyzing individual income, but all the other characteristics that um, uh, may um, reflect uh, other gender inequalities that this policy may affect by repercussion. But that, n that requires um, the policy makers or policy analysts to know what they are, and indeed, um, income is a combination of a lot of uh, other dimensions, uh, but also an instrument to um, achieve other uh, aspects of life, such as health or leisure, or uh, even the possibility to provide care or to receive care, um, employment incentives, hours of employment, all to do with uh, different uh, aspects of gender inequality. So it's not just analyzing in terms of distribution of income between different individuals or indeed between different households. The, 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 the holistic approach would require all these dimensions, dimensions to be analyzed. Sometimes um, you can reduce it to a, a few fewer dimensions, knowing what the relationship would be, depending on what the outcome of the analysis is. Um, we'll, I, I will show in a minute a distributional analysis that concentrates on people's income, but already augmented uh, from what people um, generally understand about income by including the value of uh, using public services uh, that are provided uh, for free by the government. So what could be the different dimensions of uh, different policies? What, what could be their gender effect? I'm going to browse uh, um, through public services, employment policies, tax policy, social security policy and indirect taxation, but broadly uh, I will focus on, on three of them. Public services, they're more important to women because they're more women, women are more likely to be users of public services. Um, they have a longer life expectancy, therefore uh, they will require um, um, more of the, of the services to uh, linked to old age, so health care or social care. Uh, they're more likely to live alone and therefore need others to look after them um, as opposed to, to men who can be looked after their partner, which means they also are uh, women. And they're less uh, likely to be able to afford my market alternatives because of lower incomes or c other constraints. Um, and they also uh, rely on public services to help them in uh, in their activities that they have with others, uh, such as children or uh, or or partners or, or or parents, and they're also more likely to be employed in public services and uh, be the ones that will be relieved from uh, unpaid activities when it is provided by public services. Um, so any change in uh, public services, be it employment, but also being the provision of it will affect women uh, more than men, and therefore has an important dimension to be analysed. Um, in terms of public employment, uh, indeed, um, the, condi the working conditions of, uh, in the public sector generally, not always, but generally are better uh, or more favourable in terms of many dimensions that women, due to gender norms, need to, um, to, to consider. Uh, such as uh, the, the organization of time, uh, pay policies, and um, other aspects. And therefore, that the, the, change in the, the change in the conditions of work within the public sector, um, usually in the context of austerity, to converge 
uh, downwards, a downwards convergence to the conditions of electrifying in the private sector will also uh, uh, disadvantage women more. And the gender pay gap is an example because pay differences are less pronounced in um, in the public sector than in the private sector, and um, that may, if the public sector is being reduced, that will have an, a negative impact on the overall gender pay gap. Um, in terms of policies uh, to do with investment and employment generation, I'll come back to that this afternoon because this is part of Plan F, and uh, I'll detail the, the mechanisms by which different employment policies will have different gender effects. So I'm not going to dwell on this now, but just just keep in mind that there are gender effects of different um, uh, in public investment in different sectors of the economy. Um, social security, so all the um, uh, <coughs> income transfer to um, um, safeguard from social risks, uh, such as income loss or uh, family uh, needs and um, uh, uh, um, old age um, income needs or, or care needs. The, the, again, women, as, as for public services, women tend to receive more of their income in the form of social security benefits or tax credits in this country uh, because they have lower income, therefore any, any kind of safety net or, or income um, maintenance policies will benefit them more. Uh, they're more likely to live with children and have main responsibility for them, therefore they, are, uh, they receive uh, child-related benefits more uh, in greater proportion. And as we said for public services, it also applies uh, to social security. They're more dependent on the state in old age. Um, either because of lower incomes, they couldn't build private pensions, uh, um, and but also because they have a, a, lo a longer life expectancy and therefore the pension income that they receive needs to be uh, adequate uh, to account for that. That's not always the case due to indexation that needs to uh, go longer than, than, uh, than for men. Um, and the form of social security payment matters. Um, uh, again, as it goes back to the division between household unit or individual unit, the form of the, the way the payment is uh, uh, being transferred um, may have an effect on their employment incentives. The, 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 the usual example is a means-tested benefit at the household level, so that the, the, the household income, sometimes even the household assets that, take, that are taken into account to decide the amount that is being given. And if, if it's at the household level, obviously it has an impact on the second earner, which is usually a lower earner, which is usually the woman, um, uh, to her capacity to increase employment and earnings because it will affect the, the, the amount the household uh, receives. So two households with uh, a, a household where the two, cup, the two partners work and receive equal earnings will uh, be uh, uh, less favored <coughs> as opposed to a household where there's only one partner earning um, and the other isn't. Um, in terms of personal taxation, again, it is, it is all to do with individuals versus household units of uh, a tax. In this country, um, income tax is individualized with some um, lingering aspects from the past of mar merit marital allowance, but they've introduced recently a tax transferable tax allowance between uh, married uh, partners um, and the idea is any, any type of um, household income based taxation such as in Germany or in the US or France um, will favor one earner households and um, uh, dis disadvantage the lower earner to increase their earnings because it will be taxed at the marginal rate of the higher earner, pa higher earning partner, as opposed to a lower rate, if they just increase a little their uh, lower income, as and so individual taxation is uh, fairer in terms of the taxing the value of the individual earnings um, 
and therefore recognize this per se the, the, uh, the contribution of unpaid labor um, to the household and and it um, increased the, the the effectiveness of a progressive <coughs> tax system that means pr progressive tax system is is one in which the tax rate the average tax rate increases with uh, an, uh, um, a taxpayer's income um, and depending on those rates uh, of how, how progressive or steep the progressive curve is it will uh, it will be more likely to reduce gender inequalities uh, than a family taxation um, in terms of indirect taxation as well it's usually it's uh, often ignored but the, the, the ha the, there are uh, important gender implications because men and women spend their money differently and the, the, so indirect taxation is uh, VAT and uh, fuel and excise duty alcohol duties or all, all that that usually um, don't make the mainstream news in terms of budgets and they, 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 any change to them are, are, are often thought as um, sweeteners or well if, it, if, it's, if it's reduced or um, but in terms of amount of money they raise uh, it's not it's not huge except for VAT which uh, raises uh, almost as much uh, income for the state as the, the income tax um, but it's difficult to assess because it's it's so depending on which types of goods you you buy etc. So that that doesn't mean there aren't no gender effects. That means, in particular, we need more analysis to understand what the gender effects are in terms of um, different households with different gender composition will spend on different goods, and therefore um, we need to know. Um, how changes in taxes on tobacco or fuel um, or uh, other other goods affect um, men and women's income and there's been some analysis for that by uh, uh, an international team from in different countries um, led by uh, Karen Grohn and Imran Valodia in 2010 which we were, Sue and I were part of um, on uh, the, the, the gender effects of like, um, direct taxation and indirect taxation um, to to show that so that there there is a there are techniques to analyze um, uh, the effect on on different households by gender type. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. So in general, w what policy effects are uh, can be that higher taxes and higher public spending can reduce many gender inequalities, as I just explained, um, because women uh, rely more on public services, have lower income, therefore are taxed uh, less. But also higher taxes provide revenue to uh, the state. So even if there were uh, a, a flat rate, a uh, proportional rate for everyone, uh, no, progressiv no progressivity, it would still uh, increase the, the margin of man maneuver for the state to spend on activities that will therefore benefit women. So it, it works in both ways as well. Um, and, as, and tax havens that reduce the ability to other, of other countries to uh, raise taxes <coughs> have also an adverse gender impact, um, and that needs to be considered. It's not just the, it's it's partly the amount of money that's uh, foregone, but also the way that uh, different countries' relations um, work, um, and then public sector employment because of um, a greater share of. Uh, uh, the employment that's um, um, covered by women is uh, also an important aspect of um, policy change. So, what as an as an application of that, come let, come back to uh, to austerity, uh, or uh, austerity being referred to the policy uh, that has been applied from 2010 by this government, which is deficit reduction. I'm sure we talked about it uh, la uh, yesterday. But it hasn't been analyzed from a gender point of view. And that's a critique that the Women's Budget Group has been doing for uh, many years now, that um, sometimes the response was, there is no gender effect, or we don't have the tools to do a gender impact analysis because there are dif it's difficult to look inside households, or um, uh, we can't really say that um, um, a transfer of money given to her household 
has any uh, implication within the household because the household share it equally and, and making that assumption uh, is already um, making a statement that is uh, a gender uh, statement but in the wrong way <laughs> so um, what's important to understand when we do so distributional analysis is essentially looking at if there is a policy change how it affects uh, people's livelihood, so mainly income or sometimes uh, the value of the public services they receive. It's, it's con usually considered as an overnight change, so there is no behavioral reaction. If um, uh, unemployment benefits are reduced, we don't look at whether the unemployed will uh, look more actively to find jobs or, or take jobs uh, no matter what, whatever is available. We just look at how much income they've, they've been cut. Um, but, it, but, but as a result, it needs, we need to know which income are we looking at. Is it the household, or is it the individual, or is it um, just the monetary income, or the notional value of all the free services they receive as well, uh, which we could call standard of living, which is made of disposable income plus the value of public services. Um, and then there are rules to, to try to establish, to, to break into the, the household and see how some of the income is transferred to one or the other in, uh, partner uh, with different assumptions. So all this needs to be uh, considered. There, there is no straightforward way to do it, but it's not because there are not straightforward way to do it that we, it can't be done. You could always have a range of assumptions and show the different um, effects depending on the assumptions you make. But the argument that it is complicated shouldn't be part of any um, uh, policy maker statement because uh, we've provided the tools and, and, and the models to show that it is feasible and I'm going to show you an illustration. So in this, in this um, case, the, the, the exercise was done by uh, a, macro a micro simulation tool by, uh, developed by Howard Reed at Landman Economics and it allocates the, the impact of cuts and changes in public services uh, depending on, on uh, which individuals and households, uh, well, which individuals use them um, in the context of the household. Um, and it, to, it also look at the tax and benefits changes, so indirect taxation, direct taxation, and uh, social security benefits and tax credits, um, all, all, to, all put together to see what would be the impact on uh, people's stan standard of living what we can call the full income, which is the disposable income after taxes plus the value of uh, services in countries such as health, education, transport, etc., and social care that they, um, that they received through their usage. Um, and because it's difficult to understand the individual dimension, not that it can't be done, um, you could also argue that instead of uh, deciding if, for example, universal credit is given to one, in it because the rule is that it will be given to one individual uh, in the household, uh, which one would it be? Uh, you can make assumptions about that, uh, depending on the characteristics of the, of the uh, partners in the household. Or, um, uh, but then some can argue that, oh, well, but that's completely arbitrary. Well. So that, that's still possible to do and we will do that very soon uh, to have a better understanding on um, how individual transfers or individual income are affected by change. But even if you can't, you can still have a gendered analysis on, at the household level because of a very different gender compositions of many households. The, the uh, a striking example being uh, uh, the majority of lone parents are uh, headed by women, 90% and also single pensioners are more likely to be women. So you could have um, gendered households uh, depend that, are, um, that look at the characteristics of uh, the, the gender differences between those types of households. So lone, female lone parents, male lone parents, couples with children, without children, etc. Um, and, and have an idea of how these cuts and changes affect. And to start, I will show you a distribution that's by uh, in disposable income deciles. So it's, this is not gendered per se, but
but it is jangled because the composition of these dissolves, so the the the, the, inc the the income range from the, the poorest, the lowest income decide the ten percent households with the lowest disposable income to the ten percent with the highest um, disposable income, and these are the changes in proportion of uh, the standard of living of each of these uh, household groups on average, uh, of all the tax benefits and public services cuts that have uh, taken um, place since 2010 and that have, that have been announced to be taking place to 2020. So this is the annual cut in 2020 of um, the, uh, an average household income in each of these uh, these are groups compared to what their income would have been if all the policies that have taken place or are announced to be taking place between 2010 and 20 didn't. So in a nutshell, if the March 2010 budget by the then Labour government had carried out with all the announcements about indexation, about uh, amount to be spent in public services, etc., had been carried through all the way to 2020, <coughs> what would have been their income then and what it is predicted to be due to all the announcements that have been done by the coalition government and the Conservative government now. Uh, and this is the difference. And you can see the lowest desired group is expected to have a, a cut on their living standards by 23%, which is uh, huge. The, the picture also shows the difference between the two periods. So in orange and yellow is the... Is the the changes announced by the coalition government be having taken place between 2010 and 15, or uh, still still going on uh, until 2020. And in blue um, is the are the changes announced since 2015. So since the July budget uh, in 2015, and what you can see here is. The coalitions changed. They were already decried for being unfair, uh, well, for being uh, regressive. Indeed, the, the first decile loses about 13% compared to others. But you can see this is quite not a, a very steep curve. Um, so the regressivity of the cut is not as huge as it is when you add the more recent announcement. So the, 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 in a nutshell, the, the, the incoming of the Conservative government uh, made the changes even more regressive so that the lowest income households are bearing more of the brunt of the austerity case. And why it is gendered? Because most, um, they're in, in the bottom half of the distribution of income, more women, you can find more women, essentially single pensioners uh, and, and lone parents. So j even looking at a decile which doesn't look gendered per se is a gendered analysis once you know the composition of these um, of these decile groups uh, in terms of uh, men and women. And then the other picture is to show a gendered household analysis which decompose the type of households across all income groups into, uh, depending on the characteristics, so a group of um, childless households of working age, um, uh, households with children, dependent children, and then pensioners, uh, couples, or, or and, and you have single women, single men, single uh, female lone parents, male lone parents, and female single pensioner, and male single pensioner, and then couples. And you can see that, again, that, that's more of a striking picture, that uh, cu single couples uh, headed by women are, um, are worse affected than other types of uh, single couples. couples. Uh, sorry, single uh, households uh, were, were um, headed, headed by men. So female loan parents lose about 20, 21, 22% of their um, uh, standard of living, mainly due to changes in tax benefits announced in July, and that's the introduction of universal credit at a lower, um, at a lower rate of replacement, if you like, than the current system of tax credits. Uh, due to the change in, uh, announced in July um, <coughs> 2015 about cutting it for uh, more than two children and uh, reducing the uh, allowances that uh, households would receive. Jerome? Yes? 
These are percentages of the this 2010 income. No, the 2020. I prated, I prated with inflation in 2020. So it's what if 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 all the change if if no change had been made from uh, the announcement by the Labour government in 2000, March 2010, and um, the income would have followed general um, uh, inflation until well until 2015 is earnings inflation and from 2015 to 2020 it's price inflation. <coughs> That's the uh, income of reference plus the value of the services they would have got. Uh, from the, um, the the policy in place in 2010, and then you subtract the actual predicted income based on the same operating uh, policies, except if they had been changed. Um, and also, like for single pensioners, uh, the the effect is considerable in terms of cuts to public services that they receive, even though public uh, uh, pensioners have been protected in a way uh, through an, an increase in their state pension that was far more generous than what happened to other types of benefits because they rely um, they receive other benefits than just pension uh, but also um, because they rely on social care services much more than other uh, parts of the population the cuts to social care budget which basically the government has decided to uh, uh, reduce the grants to local authorities who are responsible for social care and allow them to increase by 2% touch point the rate of council tax in order to fund it. All of this is factored in. Despite that, it doesn't compensate for the, the, the reduction in social care funding. And that's a huge... Um, it's, it's a huge cut that doesn't seem to have been in the mainstream headlines because if they've tried to compensate the, the announcement of cuts to the, uh, to the grant by uh, saying that the councils could raise 2%. But they, even if you factor in that 2%, which is a maximum assumption, not all councils would be able to do that. And also, more importantly, the councils who could be uh, needing more social care provisioning will not want to raise council tax because they might, um, they might have a, a lower income population which uh, re relies more on, uh, on social care uh, pro being provided uh, uh, freely by, by the public sector. So the, the, the solidarity between councils is being dismantled mm -hmm. by, by the, the withdrawal of government subsidy. Because this now shows up on our council tax bill, it says adult social yeah. care as a specific line. And yeah. you say everything that's solidarity across more rich and less rich yeah. regions or councils. So th this is this is um, uh, important to show as well. So. I feel like it's the um, you just said about universal benefit, explaining the difference between female loan parents and that. Can you just explain that a bit further? I didn't quite get it. So why why specifically is there more of a hit on female loan parents by the changes to universal benefit? The universal credit. It's, it's not yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you're familiar with the universal credit. Basically, it's a uh, it's a transfer, uh, it's a new system that's being implemented. It's not yet implemented fully, and it's projected to be implemented in 2020, 21. It's been postponed every, every, every year by a few years because it's, it's really difficult. Um, it's supposed to simplify the current system of, ta of tax credits and, and in-work and out-of-work benefits, such as housing benefits, income support, uh, tax credits, child tax credit, working tax credit, to, to combine into one single payment that will be awarded to one individual uh, with lots of changes in the way, in the level of allowance, in the rate by which it is reduced as income increases, uh, the way it's paid online, monthly rather than weekly, etc. Um, um, and it, it's, it's basically the elements of it that uh, female single um, uh, female on parent rely most, uh, so the, the child-related elements that have been uh, cut drastically uh, in the July budget. It was cut for the tax credit systems, the child tax credits, so the amount, the level of the reduction, the amount, uh, the threshold after which the, the generosity is being brought back, and also the number of children that were covered. 
and it has been reversed. I don't know if you remember the announcement, you know, autumn was a big announcement, but tax credits cuts have been reversed due to Boeing to pressure. But it didn't uh, apply to universal credit. And by 2020, because universal credit will have replaced the tax credit system, these cuts go through and that's what shows up. The reason why it's more for female loan parent than male loan parent is essentially because um, female loan parents have lower income. And because that's a proportion of, of inc it's in proportion of their income, it appears as a, as a larger proportion for the same amount being cut. Well, it's also that a larger, pro a larger proportion of female loan parents than any other group will be on universal Yeah, credit. as well, than, than male loan parents. So this, this is uh, uh, an illustration of how this gender analysis can be done for, from a distributional point of view, um, and that hasn't been done by the government. And indeed, the government changed the way it's even the, the previous analysis, which was more or less produced not, not, not with uh, public services, but at least with some tax benefits. It used to be an, ana an analysis after each budget about how it affects lowest, lowest income households compared to high, highest income households. And they've changed since July, and now they're no longer looking at the proportion of income that's being cut per household, <coughs> but the proportion of the cuts that's, be, that's been borne by the highest uh, households versus the lowest uh, paid household, which is a completely different way of analyzing. Obviously, if you are richer, you get more income, and therefore you pay more tax. So as a total share of the tax, you will have a great proportion. But that's not the same as saying this is now becoming a progressive system because the richer uh, household pay more taxes than the poorer household. Th that's obviously the case even if the system was just a flat rate tax. Uh, but by changing the way they are publishing their analysis, they are actually blurring the picture of how the, the public, because that's a public document, would understand um, the way um, uh, cuts affect uh, income, the distribution of, of income differently from a gender point of view as well as from different uh, income levels. So that, that's a huge um, thing that needs to be changed in order to fulfill the equality duty of analyzing gender effects of policies. And this is the way to do it. Um, obviously there are limitations um, because it only look at as, as I just showed, uh, the impact between different households. There is a way to do it within households. For, for example, um, uh, um, t personal taxes individual. So you can, you can analyze if you um, increase the taxation uh, on income tax. On income, you, you can analyze who, who it affects uh, individually. Um, but it also doesn't look at any behavioral change and long-term impact. So this is... This is a strong assumption to say that these 10 years period impacts will have an effect overnight in 2020 of that, that amount. Things have changed, as uh, Simon said, you know, how do, how, do you, how do you get the benchmark income by, uh, as, as the comparison basis? Do you operate it with average earnings? Do you operate it with the price index? But also average earnings have increased over these 10 years as a result of the policy changes as well in different ways. So, so there are limitations, but th that doesn't mean you can't make a, f a strong statement because within all these mistakes about changes, now, you can still compare <coughs> I individuals or households between themselves. They will all be <coughs> affected, well, to some extent by the same rate of inflation. Uh, um, and therefore, even if the benchmark income is different, there is still a comparison to be made. It's not true that they're all affected by the same rate of inflation because they don't spend the same on the same goods. But broadly speaking, the comparison between households still, still holds. And it's still the case that even if you change your assumptions, the lowest income households are most, most affected. Um, but also... Um, What's important and, and perhaps needs further analysis is how these changes and cuts to benefits or public services changes the incentives between men and women and, and change them differently. Um, um, uh, and, and it can reinforce the gender inequality even more than what the picture uh, showed or sometimes reduced, but it's unlikely given the shape of the, of the cuts. Um, 
So this is it. This is this is uh, just to show the, the who the Yugi Women's Budget Group is. Um, it's a network of about 200 academics, members of NGOs, activists, uh, trade unions, um, some men, <laughs> mainly women, uh, and uh, uh, all volunteering, expect, except for one part, uh, time coordinator. And the main aim, as Sue said earlier, is to analyze gender dimension, dimensions of government budgets. Been doing that since 1989. Um, publicizing results, sharing results with politicians, policymakers, try to um, make change happen. It's not, it's not a political organization. It's an independent think tank, um, obviously with strong ideas uh, about gender equality, but um, the results are available for any uh, policymaker to be changed, and, and we can be critical of any type of government, because in the last 30 years or, or more, there are many things that need to be changed to achieve better gender equality. Um, but it's true that since 2010, the level of critique uh, increased sharply because of the policies that have been implemented and, as we can see, have affected uh, women much more. Um, but it's not, to do, it's not just in the UK. There are other um, uh, countries applying austerity with, with gender effects, pronounced gender effects, for the same reason, because women rely more on public services and social security. And that's the European Gender Budgeting Network, which uh, also analyzes uh, economic policy from a gender point of view and uh, fiscal policy, so the, gender, the, uh, the way of creating gender budgets to uh, make policy uh, more effective. Um, um, and that's it. Uh, if you want some, uh, some of the websites to, uh, to have further information. Uh, thank you. Any question? You, you were talking about uh, making your words available to various politicians. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, reaction that you get, particularly from the Labour Party? The reason I single out the Labour Party is that when um, Gordon Brown used to be the finance, Britain's finance minister, he was keen on talking about getting uh, women who'd given birth back to work. I mean, that implicitly said, you know, unless you're getting paid work, you're back in the marketplace, it, 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 it's not, it doesn't count for anything. And I think this upset quite an awful lot of people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Them, this is somewhere on the Labour Party, for heaven's sake, talks, talking about, you know, looking after children. It doesn't count for anything at all. We've got to get them back into work. <laughs> That's astonishing, isn't it, from the Labour Party? I conservative, we would have understood it. <coughs> I'm wondering what the situation is now today with any of those people, um, if you manage to contact them, and even if you manage to get a response, what the response is that you're getting with the work that you and Sue and others are doing? Well, I, d I, d I don't know whether it's a, a, uh, a surprise from the Labour Party to, to have that kind of reaction, because you could, uh, you could argue that the Conservatives are indeed um, valuing a uh, home a uh, home a full time home homemaker so so that i think both both sides of the political spectrum don't haven't got yet all the dimensions that they need to have to understand what the gender issues are um, work could be improved or you could imagine policies that favor employment for all, all of them, as long as there is enough provision of all the things that need to be done uh, to provide care, such as accessible free childcare, etc. But you could imagine also reducing working time for all, so that more men can share into, uh, into uh, caring activities, and you could have a combination of both. None of the parties at the moment are making either a strong discourse in, in either way, but... Um, uh, what we're trying to do in showing whatever whatever priority you have, be it everybody at work or everybody at home or a, 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 a specialized spheres, uh, depending on gender or other criteria, you need to understand what the consequences are for the other policies, policy goals you have. And that's our main work. It's not so much to prescribe the, the world that they should um, be pursuing, even though we have our own idea of what that could be. But in the context of their 
main policy objectives. For example, uh, deficit reduction could be one main overarching policy. We may disagree on But even within that context, the policies that they implement in order to achieve that might not be effective because they've ignored the gender dimension. And I'm, I'm going to come back later on that with the plan F. Uh, and that's essentially the angle we, we take. Uh, the Labour Party at the moment has completely changed from before 2010, so, no, before 2015. So the reception is mixed, but um, the, uh, I think they, were, they are more, li they are listening more to the proposals we, we, uh, we care, or, or the analysis we, we provide, actually. So. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, don't, don't. Um, I wanted to ask you about how you include macro factors. Let's start with, coming back to that point, more forward and around enabling us to come into the workplace. And there's, a, there's an issue with rhetoric about valuing home place work, but feminism for me is entirely about enabling me after I've had my children to not be kicked out of the workforce. And you need policies in place for that, for that to happen. So I'm all for everything born and grounded to enable women to get back into the workplace after having children. Now, um, macro effects. So when you had a look at um, some of the arguments that were behind the austerity policies, so the idea of expansionary fiscal contraction, the, the, the causal process that they referred to was about cutting the welfare bill, cutting jobs in the public sector, and cutting wages in the public sector, so you could reduce wages overall in the private sector. And then in theory, you get higher profit share, higher investment growth. That, mm -hmm. was their, that was their causal analysis. So if you look at wages in the private sector, they have indeed come down. So I'm wondering if you incorporate that at all in your effects, because they are also gendered. So I was looking at, um, there was a report in the, from the London Assembly about how now one in four women in London are earning less than the London living wage. And they in particular, have had extremely anemic wage growth. This was this was an attack on Boris, so it was about the eight years since Boris got elected as mayor. It was saying women are worse off in real terms than they were when you were elected as mayor. So I wonder if you incorporate any of that, the actual the wages you're earning as outside the, the benefit and tax system explicitly organised by the state. Because mm. these are a repercussion of, of the state policies. I mean yes, there are there is some some of it being built, but obviously the the because the comparison is about the policy, the direct policy effect of a change in, in transfers, we not we don't incorporate the employment, uh, the earnings, the indirect effects of policy change on employment behavior and therefore on earnings. But earnings policies are implemented, such as the increase in the national living wage, uh, well, the minimum wage for over 25 is in, is, in, is included, uh, assumptions on the uh, inflation of earnings being flat indeed at, at that, uh, but, but it's not a gendered uh, earning assumption, it's, it's an, uh, a, national, uh, a national number. But that definitely is part of what a gender analysis should be about, it's also looking at the, the gross income and how they evolve uh, um, as a result of, of policy changes, which might require a bit more of a behavioral model to be, to be built in to, to be able to, to do that, such as wa wage equations. And, uh, um, what, what you're yeah. showing you there is only one aspect of what we do. I mean, we do also comment on precisely the sort of things that you're talking about, about the effects on, on the gender wage gap. I, I, yeah. um, I, it's just, so what Jerome is producing is that it showed you there was the specific distribution. Okay. There, there will be more on this this afternoon when I talk about social infrastructure and, and <coughs> the employment uh, policies to develop uh, better, better jobs. So. But definitely, it's, it's important to have those dimensions in mind. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I can ask this question, um, but it's more political. Um, and um, because I, I, I didn't really see much in there about um, the contribution of the EU and the EU policy on, on women in this country. Um, and, and just also as a um, sub-question, and you might say a bit boring, but um, you know, the referendum you've got coming up, and you know, whether, <laughs> whether if Britain stays in or, or leaves, whether that would have any impact on, on women's 
lives in relation to work and care, or even the facts that you know more than that? Yeah, again, I mean, it's, it's, uh, this, this is a particular set of, of uh, gender impact. It's an example of what uh, a distribution of gender impact analysis could be uh, to isolate the effect of particular policies, be it the budget changes and the spending changes. So we could do the same for legislation changes or at the European level and how it has um, um, given wi women more rights uh, in terms of parental leave, in terms of working hours, uh, the lots of uh, EU regulation that has been uh, um, implemented in order to, to foster gender equality, and at the same time there are other other aspects of the uh, EU uh, um, social model that that has been uh, weaker in, in in promoting gender equality because they wanted to keep national. Uh, um, uh, uh, so sovereignty on, on some social social issues, uh, such as taxation or social security settings and stuff. So, so, but definitely, you know, I don't have an answer to what the, what the, a Brexit would would uh, would have. Uh, wh what I could hinge is that because the UK has opposed many of the EU legislation or tried to water down many of the EU legislation in terms of working time, in terms of uh, protection for maternity rights. Uh, it may or may not mean that if, if uh, the UK was to leave, they, they would revise those legislation uh, that would be more damaging to, to women. But we don't know, because it depends on the government also at the, at the time. And, uh, but, uh, so. uh, yeah, one last, maybe we should, we should move on. But. I, I like the